You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with mini dental implants. Uh, according to my first guest, nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. Uh, with us, we have an expert on this topic, Dr. Andy Coulteritis. Dr. Coulteritis, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me here, Randy. So before we get into today's topic, I brought a lot of uh, questions here I have for you. But who's the typical patient that comes in for dental implants to replace their teeth? The typical patient is primarily people who have broken down teeth and are getting ready to lose their teeth and moving into dentures. The second group of people that come in are the ones that are actually wearing dentures and they want to have them stabilized or they want a full set of teeth just like you and me have right now, Randy. Okay, good. Now, you do a lot of things in your practice. I guess you have a, like, a, like your own lab or you make teeth crowns in one day. Yes, we have a CEREC machine which actually makes porcelain crowns on the same day. So if a person comes in and they have a broken tooth, we can actually fix it that same day so they don't have to come back a second time to see us. Okay, now you've been in your practice for about 26 years at that location. Yes, I've been. Um, Where are you located? I'm in Munster, Indiana. It's in okay. Northwest Indiana. Uh, we're really close to the Chicagoland base area. Um, there's The town itself is about 24,000, but the, the county that I live in is about, I think it's about 500,000 people that live in the area. Okay, good. And, and, and you're active in the community. I, I understand you're on the town council. Yes, I am serving my second term there in the town of Munster, and it's my way of giving back. I enjoy, you know, talking with people and making sure the town is run properly. Everybody must know you there, <laughs> right? Everybody knows that there. there he is. There I am. Yeah, I actually uh, advertise a lot on the radio there, and I have a jingle that a lot of people listen to, and they stop me in on the streets when they see me and they ask me to change it because it kind of <laughs> sticks in your head when they actually it, see it. It's so. true. You know what? I, we have a clip of this jingle. I want to play this jingle because people will probably know, oh, this is the guy that has the jingle. So look, we're going to go to the jingle for just a second. Um, here we go. Dr. Randy Coulteritis, he does cosmetic dental. Will he hurt me? No, he's gentle. So, so, so that can be uh, an irritating remember. I mean, you can remember that jingle. Oh, there, right? there's people that enjoy it, because, but it actually sticks with them all day. So that's the one thing. that I tried to change it a couple of times, and it just didn't work out very well. And then <laughs> I've been using it for almost 10 years, so it's a great, great jingle. It's worked well for us. Now, uh, you wrote the book. You're, you know, people need to know, too, because I'm, I'm not trying to side with you here today. It's a real interview. I'm just asking the questions. But you wrote Your Smile Matters. Yes. Uh, and you give this to patients. We give it to all our new patients and our existing patients too. Uh, it's a quick read and it kind of gives you an idea of what dentistry is all about and how your smile and improving your smile will actually makes a difference in your, your world and in your life. Now we should mention that, that how, I, I guess how it's normally done with the dental implant is you go to one doctor that does the surgery and then another dentist that puts the teeth on top and maybe somewhere else where the imaging, and you kind of have this all under one roof concept. I like to refer that as the old way. Uh, that's how it used to be done, but in this day and age, uh, most patients want to come to one place and have it all done in one office, and we do that for our patients. So it's all, all right there? All there. Now you go through a lot of continuing education, you told me. Yeah, I... Uh, like a lot more than what's required. I, uh, well, we are required by our state to have 40 credit hours every two years. I try to do at least 100 credit hours every year. Okay. I really enjoy learning and uh, I feel that it keeps me on my toes. Okay. Uh, most of the continuing education that I do is kind of geared from my patients. Uh, over the years, I'll actually start taking specific classes because patients will come in and tell me, well, how come you're not doing this? Or right. how come I'm not doing that? So, I mean, when I first started in my uh, career, I was doing a lot of orthodontic work because I'm, a lot of my patients wanted me to straighten out their teeth. And uh, I did that for a while and we still do a lot of that. And then uh, all of a sudden patients, I was referring out for implants because I wasn't doing implants. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, how come you're not doing that? So. I moved into the implant field and I've been doing that for over 10 years now. And now this is the happiest group of patients, you say? Yeah, they are because you're giving them something back that they've been missing for years. And it, it's, it's mind changing, it's life changing. Is that right? It is. Now, now uh, in, where you are, in, in your county, are there a lot of people wearing dentures? Because at the top of the show, we said no more dentures, no more traditional dentures. Right. There, well, and to put it into perspective, you know, we could probably fill Soldier Field 10 times over with people who are missing at least six teeth in their mouth or are missing all their teeth or are on their way to lose all their teeth and moving towards dentures. 
And, you know, you have over tens of thousands of people that are actually wearing dentures right now that are just kind of sitting in their mouth and they're not functioning properly with that. Now, uh, if it's so good, that means uh, getting dental implants, to get your teeth back, right? Why is everybody doing it? What's your take? Well, Why aren't these especially de denture wares to come in and get them snapped in or locked in? What's your take? Well, I think, Randy, uh, there are several reasons. I think the first reason is, and the main group that isn't coming in, are people who are actually wearing dentures. They haven't, they haven't had a need for a dentist for seven, eight years. So they're going along with life, and they're trying to function. They think this is, this is it. This is all I, you know, this is how I'm going to eat the rest of my life. So I don't have the opportunity to have that conversation so with the them So the denture anymore. wearers don't even go to the they dentist? They don't go to the dentist okay. anymore. So the thing is, you know, when I do see them five, six years later, you know, it's because they have a sore spot or their denture's getting loose and they want to reline. And, you know, they come in for the reline and they're upset that they're in my office and they have to pay for a reline on their denture and they're really not listening to the options that we have to afford them. So when they do come in, we're trying to mention to them, hey, we can make this better for you. We can allow you to chew better by actually placing some implants in there and stabilizing your dentures. Uh, this so is this the hottest thing in dentistry right now? Like the, the small diameter, as you call them, or mini implants? The mini implants are probably the, I would say they probably are the hottest thing right now, primarily because you can actually place them on a lot of people who think they don't have enough bone to actually be able to have an implant in their mouth to stabilize their dentures. Uh, there are people that wear uh, their dentures for 20, 30 years, not knowing that they can actually move into something that they can be able to chew, taste their food, and uh, smile better. All right, back to your original question, Randy. Uh, the reason why these denture wearers aren't coming in is, let me tell you a little bit about them before they were denture wearers. You know, they were coming in for 10, 20 years, coming to the dentist for 30, 50 visits, having a broken tooth, needing to have a root canal done, going over to the specialist, having hot sensitivity, cold sensitivity, loose teeth, flaring teeth. You know, it, there are a whole bunch of different things that are going on with them, and they finally just kind of give up. And they're like, the day that they actually have all their teeth taken out, it's done. It's over. They don't have to come see me anymore. So the last thing they want to do is come see you. The last thing they want to do is Good come point. and see me. And the thing is, you know, once we give them their dentures, you know, they're uncomfortable for the first week or two, but they can't taste their food. They don't know what hot and, you know, what's hot and what's cold. You know, they're having these sore spots, but us being humans, we adapt. And what happens is once we adapt, we forget about it. So they feel like they don't need to see me anymore. And that part of their life is gone. So they're like, it's over with. I don't have to worry about my teeth anymore. Third reason is that expense. People, yeah. people come in, you know, or, you know, they sit back and they're like, well, you know what? I've got, they look at their denture and they're like, well, I got like 20, 22 teeth and I can't afford 22 implants. And that's not the case either. You don't right. need, you don't need that many implants to stabilize a denture or get your own teeth back. Uh, the fourth reason is fear, fear of dentistry. You know, they just went through all this, and a lot of them are actually afraid of going through it again. Well, but people hate the dentist, hate going to the dentist. Do you ever hear that? I hear like that. No all, offense, doctor. Nah, how do they say it? That's, they? that's exactly how they say it. You know, even, you know, I'll get new patients come in, and the first thing they'll say is they, they can't stand sitting in my chair, but they know they have to have, to have things treated. So, you know, we they say of, it a lot. They say it a lot. It's very common. Do you have a you comeback know? after all these years? I just smile at them and say, we'll take care of you. And you okay. know, just like you're one of my family members. So that's, that's what we do. And the fifth reason is that they think that they're too old. How old can you be to get dental implants? Get your uh, teeth back. You can, you can be 90 years old, 100 years old if you want to have dental implants done. Uh, the big thing is that a lot of them actually self-diagnose, meaning they think that they're too old to actually have this done. You know, we just had a 70 year old come in the other day and you know, she's coming in and we're talking about upper and lower dentures and I'm telling her that, you know, I can actually make this better for you so you don't actually have to have this lower denture moving around. She's like, doc, I'm too old for this. And I'm like, no, you're not. It's only 70. 70 years old. And I'm like, no, we do this every day for 70 year olds. It's, it's, it's a no brainer. People really, you know, it's life changing when we do this for people. Well, so what's your oldest patient that you've, you've had? 
Uh, the oldest got, patient I've had was 92 years old. They got dental implants, mini got implants. Many implants were placed in her mouth. But 92 years old, why would a 92 year old want to do this? Well, they want to eat and they want to chew just like you. Okay, you know, that's a good point. You know, they're, they're tired of having mashed potatoes, mashed potato diets, high carb diets. You know, they're drinking their calories in. You know, they want to be able to chew. You know, I, even at 92, I mean, if you're in a wheelchair or you're bedridden, you know, one of the final things you can enjoy in life, you should enjoy what you're eating. You know, it's... So you can eat whatever you want with these things? You can eat whatever you want, pretty much, yes. Now, now, now is this true that in certain cases, if everything goes right, they can walk in on the day of the procedure with no teeth and walk out with teeth that don't come out? Absolutely. Like a full arch of teeth? Full arch of teeth. Really? Yes. Full arch of teeth and uh, it's, it's mind changing. You say mind changing. What do you mean by that? It mean, what I mean is I'll, what happens with a lot of these patients that come in and you're, doing the, you're delivering the, the final product that day, you know, you're, you're, you're getting ready to, you set them up for the appointment. You're making sure the teeth are just spot on for them, the color blends, the, the tissue looks beautiful. And when you actually put it in their mouth and you sit them up and you hand them the mirror and they look in the mirror and when they actually look in the mirror and you actually see a tear come out of their eye, you know that that is the first day of their, their life right there. Wow. And it's changing all over again for them. It's, it's, it's mind changing. See, I mean, you've said that to me on the phone when we talked right. a little bit, that it changes people's lives. Yeah. So That's, it's that big of a deal for that, them. It's that big of a deal. I had one patient that came in, you would think she was 70 years old and uh, you know, her, her teeth were just falling apart. And she, she's a public servant. She comes in, you know, she's talking to people all day. She looks like she's mad. Well, she's not mad. She just can't hold on to what's in her mouth. So she's, she's trying to tighten up everything, all her muscles in her, her face, to be able to speak to you. She was wearing a denture? She was wearing a partial that was missing multiple teeth. Okay. Upper and lower. You know, and the thing is, when you, you take them, f when you transform them from that to what they were. Like getting their teeth back. This lady can't stop smiling. Can't stop smiling. You know, it's, it's, it's mind changing. It's life changing, not mind changing. It's life changing because you're giving them back their inner charisma. You're giving them the ability to go back out there and actually, you know, have a new life. You know, it, because it, of self-confidence goes way up. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So back to the 92 year old, you know, her daughter brings her in, in a wheelchair, and she's complaining to her daughter that she can't eat. So, you know, her daughter brings her in, you know, and we look at her and, you know, they were at a previous dentist that pretty much told her that she didn't have enough bone to have this treatment done. Okay. Well, we, we evaluate her, we take the imaging that we need to take. And, you know, she had, she definitely had enough bone for us to do the stabilization of her denture. So what we did, we placed the mini implants in that same day, readjusted her denture, locked it in place, showed her daughter how to remove it, to clean it, and put it back in her mouth, and she's eating just fine right now. And no more adhesive or anything like no that? No more adhesive, no hockey puck, nothing moving around in her mouth, nothing falling out of her mouth. It's great. So if a 92-year-old could do it, I guess 70 is young today anyway. 70 years. 70 is like no big deal. No, not at all. And you know what? And people are living. And, and one thing that I will tell you, Randy, is that a lot of people, when they tell me I'm too old for this, well, one of the first questions that come out of my mouth is, how old was your mother when she passed away? How old was your father when he passed away? And when they tell me 92, 96, 85, I'm telling them, all right, well, you're 70 years old. You've got another... 10 to 20 years. What do you want to do? You want to walk around being afraid to enjoy your life? And, you know, a lot of them actually move forward with it. And once they do, they're, they're happy as can be. Now, so what do they like more? Do they like the chewing when they get their teeth back with, with the mini implants? Or do they like the way it looks, oh. like a new smile? Well, what's funny about that, Randy, is you got two camps of people that come in. You have the first camp that are, are coming in because they can't eat, all right? So when they come in and you're, you, you start, you know, taking care of their mouth and actually locking in their teeth so that the teeth are solid, that they can chew, you kind of see a change in their face. So they're actually enjoying their smile All right. more. You got the other ones that come in, they're like, hey, doc, I got this wedding coming up 
in a month. I don't like the way my teeth look. I hate the way it is. You got to fix me up before the wedding. Well, they come in specifically for me making the smile look better. But those people come back afterwards and they're like telling me, I'm eating salads with cucumbers in them. I'm biting into things. I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing with my teeth again. And they thank you, which is, which is the greatest thing on earth is when, when a patient comes to me and tells me, thank you for giving me my smile back, you know, it's the greatest thing on earth. That's the best compliment anybody can give me. Do you think it's the future of dentistry, whether it's 50 years or whatever, that traditional dentures the way they are today, sitting on, you know, just on adhesive, will be gone, everything will be attached to something like I, the mini implant? I actually believe that it will be the standard of care, yes. So I believe that the days of actually just wearing dentures without them being stabilized or fixed permanently in the jawbone are gonna be gone, yes. Now you've written a book on dental implants, what people need to know. Some people would say you're at the top of your game when it comes to dental implants or mini implants. Does it cost more to go to a guy like you? No. He's written a book, talks about this? Not at all, it actually costs less to have your teeth stabilized or actually fixed permanently and with mini implants than it does with traditional implants. Are they less? Yeah, they cost less, absolutely. And there's less pain, the less time to get things moving along. So it's, it's a, it, the process has been shortened with mini implants as compared to traditional implants. Now, what do you say to the person? Like for example, I've had dentists on this show at this desk and they say the problem with mini implants is they're too small. They're more likely to fall out. Uh, they're just not there yet. What's your response to that? Uh, that that's not true at all. Uh, there's actually studies out there that are 10-year studies that show that the success rate of mini implants as compared to traditional implants are at 94 to 96%. So that, that, that is not true any longer. Okay, so that's changed. That's changed. And they're FDA approved? FDA approved. I mean, they're, they're, they're FDA approved just like the all other implants are right now too. Now, if you, one of your family members lost a tooth, would they go with, would you go with a mini implant? Uh, I, I would look at that one first, yes, because it, it, we can actually place it in there and immediately replace uh, the missing tooth with, with a mini implant a lot faster than with a traditional implant. Now talk about the denture wearers for a second, because we talked and we said no more dentures at the top of the show. I know a few, a couple denture wearers, they never seem to complain. Are you saying that there's really no such thing as a happy denture wear? Well, Randy, you're not a dentist. They're not going to complain to you. Okay, right. You know, so I mean, yeah. they, I mean, they don't. You know, I have patients come in that are wearing dentures, and I do this for them, and then they bring their spouse in, and uh, some of them don't even realize that their spouse has a denture. Really? Yeah, because their their spouse is actually timing it to where they're taking it out, cleaning it, while the spouse is not around. You know, and then once they realize it, then they bring them in and we, we have that same conversation with them. Now on the consult, so when they, take me through that process, like how soon, like let's say a person with no teeth comes in or a person that is headed to a denture, that means you can't save their teeth. How soon on that first consult with you, that exam, do you know that you could do this? Uh, that same day. With our imaging uh, software that we have, we can pretty much tell them that day. Uh, that we can actually either save their teeth if they're coming in that they have teeth or if they're, they're actually going in the direction of where they're gonna be losing all their teeth. But at the initial consultation appointment with the imaging that we do, we can kind of give them an idea of what we can do or what we can't do. And one thing is that at that initial consultation appointment, most people don't have a clue on what they wanna have done. So we kind of give them all their options. So we kind of explain to them well, there, there, there are easy things like the snap on and snap off mm -hmm. teeth that we can give you, or we can move you into the permanent one where they don't come out at all. So we kind of go it through all like their options. It seems like that's what people want though, right? Teeth that don't come out. Right, and the, the, the issue with that is it's a cost factor. You know, so we can kind of give them the range of what all the different costs are, and you make the decision, you know. It, it's, can you graduate somebody? That means start with a snap in, snap out, and, set of teeth, and then move and to... And that's what I was going to move into, is where I have people that will start with a snap in and snap off, and but they do want the permanent end result, and we can actually gradually move them into that. But they're at a point where they, they need something, and they don't like the idea of their teeth moving around and they want to stabilize them. So if we can stabilize them first, get them comfortable with that, then we slowly move them into the next step. You think you wipe out dentures in Munster? I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could, yeah.
it'd be nice, but it's... I, I mean, if there was, let's say the denture wears. I'll do a hypothetical. And there was a, a try-in period. You know, like all the denture wears come in, try a fixed set of teeth for the weekend. I guess nobody could go back to right. their loose-fitting denture. No. no one would want to. No one would want to. And uh, it's, it, it's a big issue out there, but, you know, a lot of people don't know it. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to educate as many people as we can. And uh, by educating my base, they move out and educate their friends. And then we get more people coming in, and then we try to educate them more, too. You mentioned earlier that some people come in and they were told that they didn't have enough bone. They were told this elsewhere. Right. So what are you doing that they, they didn't do? Well, that, that, that is true. I get patients that come in and they say that they went to another dentist and they told them that they didn't have enough bone. Well, they probably didn't have enough bone because of the ex expertise of that dentist or because of the imaging software and the, the equipment that they have. We have a CT scanner that actually gives oh. you a three-dimensional view of the bone uh, that you have, and then we have a better opportunity to try to visualize where with a surgical stents where we can actually place these implants to actually stabilize your dentures. So it's life changing. Oh yeah, absolutely. I had one patient that, uh, a lady that came in, uh, she was probably in her late 50s or so, and uh, she came in taking care of her mother all the time, taking care of her kids, her mouth was just falling apart. You'd look at her and she, she just looked like she wasn't happy. You know, we brought her in, you know, she was a patient of ours for a while. She finally recognized that she cannot no longer take care of her mouth the way she, uh, it is. You right couldn't now. save her teeth. Could not save her teeth. And she understood that. So what we did was we moved her forward and we actually made her a set of teeth. And then one afternoon we, we removed all her teeth and we placed the, uh, the mini implants in place, placed her teeth in her mouth and handed her a mirror and she literally started crying. She literally wow. started crying. It was, you know, she, she was, she had the office crying. She was so happy. Is that right? She was so happy because she got her smile back that, you know, she didn't know what to say, you know, and she, she, she's grateful ever since. Now, when people come in and, and they tell you some of their hard luck story, like what they can't eat, the pain they're in, et cetera. Do you yeah. ever hear it and kind of get excited? Like, this is going to be good. They have no idea. I had one guy that came in and he, all he wanted to do was eat cashews. He couldn't eat cashews and, uh, we took care of him, gave him his new set of teeth, and he's eating cashews. Happiest man as can be. Yeah, but the upper denture is fine. Is that right? It's got enough suction. So why do the upper? Well, well Randy, I mean, the upper is, you know, that first week, you know, that upper denture is covered, covering up the roof of their mouth. It's a bunch of plastic up there. They can't taste their food. Okay. It, they can't sense hot or cold. So you're really not just tasting your food, Randy. You know, we put six or eight implants in there, remove the roof of the mouth, they can taste your food again. Is that right? So, yeah. So the palate's not covered. The palate's not covered. I mean, you can actually taste your food. I mean, you, you enjoy your food more because you can taste it now. If you leave just an upper denture in there and just take care of the lower art, you're still not tasting your food. I mean, you're going to chew better. Don't get me wrong. You'll be able to bite into things, but you're still not going to be able to taste your food. And they look real. They look. Because I feel like I could spot a denture walking down the street. Oh, yeah. They, they look real as can be. I had a... A husband and wife come in, and the husband actually came in and complimented me on her. He didn't realize how gorgeous her, her smile was, and he started looking at her teeth, and he pretty much told us that he couldn't tell that they were denture teeth. So it's like a new lease on life. That sure is. Now, we should mention, I guess Medicare, Medicaid does not cover this at all. Uh, even with the best insurance, covers only a small portion. Yeah, Randy, but we finance all this. You know, we, we try our best to actually work. If you have insurance, we try our best to utilize your insurance and maximize your insurance. But most of these people are financing this well, stuff. Was that right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we work with three or four companies to try and get the best financing uh, we can for you, too. What about pain? It does seem painful. No, they don't complain about pain at all. I have uh, patients that take Tylenol Motrin. I give them a prescription for a pain pill. But they, some of them will come back the next day and they will actually tell me they only took a Tylenol Motrin. I had one gentleman that was really fearful about it. And he actually tried taking a, he took a couple of Motrins that night. He came back the next day and said, Doc, I didn't even have to take the pain pills. And is it because it's a small, a mini implant? The, is what, less invasive? It's, it's, so this is like a mini, minimally invasive implant. Absolutely. And that's the, bit, that's the key there is that you, we're not actually going in there and making we're not being very aggressive with the tissue itself. And when you actually do minimally invasive procedures, there's less pain involved. Okay.
So this is the way to go, the mini implants. This is the new way to go. The modern implants is the way to go. Now there's two types of implants, and we're talking about the mini implants today. Right. They're about half the cost, half the downtime. Is that true too? That is correct. Less downtime, and you're never too old. You claim 92-year-olds, even 100-year-olds, you said are doing Absolutely. It. I've had a colleague of mine actually place them on a 100-year-old, but the oldest one that I've placed it on is 92-year-old. 92. Yes. So, so, so no excuses. Is this more men or women that are doing this? It's, it's about 50-50 right now. My, men put my everything office, off, right? Well, and that's just it. I, I get the spouses that bring them in, so. But they're coming in. It's about 50-50 in my practice right now. Now, what about the people with bad gums? You know, bleeding gums. They have gum disease. Can they do this? Oh, absolutely, Randy. Even they're, if their gums are bad? They're, they're the ideal candidates because their gums are inflamed and their bleeding is because of the bacterial infection that's in their mouth. Once we get rid of the teeth, that goes away and the gums heal up and then we can actually place the implants in there. Absolutely, they're the ideal candidate for this. Now these people don't even really need to be sedated, you say? No. You're just numbing the area? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. We have people that are fearful and want to be sedated a little bit further than that, and we do offer that to okay. those patients. But I would say the majority of my patients were just using local anesthetic, and they're just taking uh, Tylenol Motrin. So in your town, I'm sure there's people, because they go to their same dentist for many, many, many years, they could go to you, get, the, get their teeth back with the mini implants, and they could still go back to their dentist. Absolutely. And maintain it and everything else. If they want to, absolutely. Okay, so a recap on the options. So a denture wear, or somebody that you can't save their teeth. Their options are a snap in, snap out set of teeth, you can, or teeth that don't come out. You can do. You can look at both of those options. It really depends on the preference of the individual. You know, it's some people just want the function to chew, to be able to eat, to be able to taste their things, and you can do that with a snap on, snap off. Other people don't want the idea of. They want their teeth back. They want to be okay. able to chew. They want to be able to not worry about them falling out of their mouth. They want a permanent end result, and we can still do that with mini implants too. And they can look good. And they're going to look great. We are out of time. Final message. The two groups of people, they have bad, bad teeth, and they're headed to dentures. But, and they've heard what you had to say, but they're still skeptical. They're worried about whatever. And then the denture wear. That they say, well, my denture's fine. What do you say to those two groups of people? Well, I pretty much tell them to, to come in. I, I, I'm inviting them to come in so I can actually give them their options. They don't know what they're missing until they actually see what can be offered to them. And they can eat right away, like right after the procedure? Right after How the soon procedure. Can they, eat? they can eat right after the procedure. Really? Really. Absolutely. But you don't know until you know. And free consultation? Free consultation, yes. Yes. So you give them, you, you take some x rays, you look at them, and you tell them what? I pretty much tell them that day that I see them what I can do for them. Are they still, do some of them, they're skeptical? They're still skeptical, but they come back later. Yes. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Great stuff. Thank you. Your book, Dental Implants, What Every Person Needs to Know, uh, they can get that at your office. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.